Okay, we're now recording the meeting. And 6.02, we call the meeting to order. Are there any additions or changes to the agenda? Okay, hearing none. Is there any public comment? Okay, I have two. Oh, John, I see your hand is up. Go ahead, sir. John, you must be on mute because I can't hear you. Okay. There. Okay. There you um, are. Uh, just uh, letting members of the board know that um, I think tomorrow I will be sending you all a, a, a request to uh, take the the post that we had on Front Porch Forum on Monday and repost it sometime this week uh, in your own community. Uh, we get the one post for free. Uh, it's a reminder about our webinar next week, uh, and we'd like to reinforce that as much as we can. So if you can, I, I will send the text. You can personalize it if you want or put it up on Front Porch Forum in your community. Uh, that's what I'm asking, and uh, I'm done. Th th thanks, John. Michael uh, Gray, you have your hand up, sir? Yes, um, I just wonder if this is an appropriate time for me to introduce myself. That it's absolutely perfect time. Okay, go for it. So um, I am a um, a new uh, rep to CV Fiber. I am a Woodbury alternative rep. Um, so, and I want to apologize for the town for um, the lack of uh, a representative from Woodbury. We thought people were attending the meetings until um, we recently had a had a meeting um, about CV fiber. Um, so, um, and I also want to let you know that I have a conflict on Tuesday evenings, the second Tuesday of every month. I'm also the Woodbury rep to the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission and their meeting starts in half an hour. So I'm um, planning on attending this meeting till seven or a little after and then jumping out and maybe jumping back in. And the town is going to be working on trying to solve that conflict um, for me by either finding um, someone else to be the rep to CV Fiber or someone else to be the rep to the Regional Planning Commission. So, thank um, you. Thanks, Michael. That, that's excellent. And also, if there's any backfill you'd like to do by going back and forth with me for questions, you know, we can always do that one on one. If, okay. if you know if you if you look at the minutes and you say, well, what was that that happened when I wasn't there? We mm -hmm. also have another uh, new delegate. Is that Ted Barnett? Is, is that your hand that's up, sir? Ted, you're on mute, maybe. Uh, I can't hear Ted. Can anybody else hear Ted? No. I, I don't. I don't see you being on mute. But you. Uh, you're. You, you, yeah, he is. He, I now you're on mute. Symbol next to Ted. Ted, you may want to call in. Yep. Or turn your mic on. But it looks like you're you're muted right now. If you look. To unmute, if you look in the upper left-hand corner of your of your uh, Teams window, the third icon from the left should be a mic icon, and if you click on that, it should unmute you. What's that? Yes, just check. Well, you're 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 still you're still you're still you're still muted, Ted. Um, but we'll 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 move on, and you jump in when you when you when you when you get that figured out. Uh, we'll move on to the meeting minutes approval. Uh, Jeremy, uh, you want to take that? Just a sec. Yeah. So a motion to approve the uh, August 9th, twenty twenty two meeting minutes as drafted. Second. Okay, I see a second by Siobhan. I also see a hand up from Alan. Yeah, uh, I wanted to propose a revision to the third bullet item under policy committee recommendations on page two. Um, okay, the revision, let me bring that back up. Just 
so a small addition that I okay. think we should do. So the revision is to add after the phrase developed by the policy committee, add a phrase based on a proposal from Ray Pelletier and Christopher Shank. So the full sentence would read, Alan Gilbert presented a governing board delegate attendance rule developed by the policy committee, and then based on a proposal from Ray Pelletier and Christopher Shank. I just wanted to 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 get in there who the who the authors of of the original uh, proposal were. So let me just. So can you see my screen, Alan? Uh, yes, I can. So we're on page okay, two. Okay, so it would be right here. Is, is, is my cursor at the right place? Uh, I think so. If I can see it, it's pretty small. <laughs> yeah, no, that's the right place. You got it. Developed by the policy and committee. Then, and then based on a proposal from Ray Pelletier and Christopher Shank. All right, I'll stop sharing my screen before people get mad at me not remembering how to spell names. <laughs> That's excellent. Yeah. Thank I would you, say Alan. It, it, All right. So it should I, be proposal. It should be proposal from instead of by. Oh, proposal from. OK. Yeah. Um, I would accept that as a friendly amendment. All right. Okay. I've That's got great. one other. It, this is just a really small typo on page three. There's a typo in the indented bullet section at the bottom of the page. In the third line of the indented section, the word key. At the end of the line should be plural keys. Just want to make sure that uh, yes, this doesn't. You. Yeah, just so people when they're reading it 10 years from now for history, they'll <laughs> they won't stumble over it. They don't think we have bad grammar. Uh, Excellent. So I would also accept that as a friendly amendment. Are you OK with those, Siobhan? Yep, there we go. Excellent. Why is so my have, camera off? Well, who turned my camera off? We have the two friendly amendments. Thank you, Alan. We always appreciate that. Let's get it right. Uh, any additional discussion on these minutes? Are there any opposed then to the modified motion, the friendly amendment included? Hearing none opposed, any abstaining? None opposed, none abstaining. The motion is approved. Thank you very much. Very much appreciate that. Uh, we have uh, Ray, Ray from the Finance Committee and Mary Beth, our treasurer. Do we have a treasurer's report for this evening? Lori Beth has the uh, treasurer's report. <laughs> thank, thank you, yeah, Lori Beth. I just tried to had to get the mute button to work. Um, yes, I had. I sent out a treasurer's report. Uh, we recently paid. Uh, $62,462.99 in checks that were paid out. All of them were accepted and approved by Janelle. And um, there wasn't anything that's outstanding that needs to be um, approved or accepted by anyone else. Um, at the moment, she just sent in another batch um, that will be paid probably with this sometime this week for $13,484. $85.57. Um, so that will be going out again this week as well. Um, before the ones that at, at the end of um, uh, September 9th, when they paid the, la the first checks this month, um, there was a balance in the account of 20 of two million five hundred seventy eight thousand twenty six dollars and fifty two cents. And I sent out the uh, financial pay, pay pages, financial statements, the profit and loss, the uh, balance sheets, um, and also the grant sheet, uh, the grants update. And um, also sent out um, the, the accounts payable. There were some invoices set, sent out that um, I understand Janiel generated. Um, there, we came across one error um, so that has been um, apparently rectified, and it, there, the town of Worcester is getting a new invoice. They had been invoiced for fifty thousand. It should have been, or yeah, and it should have been fifty-three thousand. 
So Janelle has um, issued that or asked uh, Batchelder to reissue that invoice. And we're double checking to make sure there aren't any other um, errors. I think that's all. We had a little bit of a discussion with Batchelder about their timing and paying and the new girl who's been handling it wanted to hold everything for two. Basically, it was going to be two weeks. And she didn't want, she wanted Janelle to hold them for a week. Then she wanted to hold them for a week. And because you all know, it takes another week. And I, I told Janelle and I explained to her in detail why. I said, that's just not acceptable. I said, we are a new entity. We don't need these companies getting nervous if we're behind on our schedule. And the rents, of course, have to be paid by the 10th of the month. So I told her, I said, no, I said, that's not acceptable. So she has passed that on to their new bookkeeper. Thank you, Lori Beth. And Not thank you for watching out for us in that way. That's <laughs> much appreciated. Well, I was the help of, yeah, Alan also helped me. He brought it up because he'd gone to the town of Worcester and he let me know. So then I chased it down. Thank Excellent. you. Excellent. Yes, thank you. Any 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 comment on the treasurer's report? before we move on. So I've, I've, I've asked Janiel to cover three areas for today's uh, executive's director report, the make ready the materials and our warehouse situation to bring everybody up to date. Uh, Janiel, do you wanna take over? Janiel, you're on, you're on mute. Sorry. <laughs> well, Janiel is still on mute. We seem to be having mute issues. Did she she drop off? Where'd you go? I don't know. Look, it looks looks like she's here. I wonder if she had internet issues. She had her camera on, and now I don't see her. So she may have been kicked off. But well, there is the some weather passing through. Connected people. Yeah. It's some point why we need. <laughs> well, we can. Uh, we can we can move on to the to the town ARPA funds and and come back. Yeah, it seems like a, a, a number of folks are having uh, are are have are having trouble here. So let's let let let's move let's move on to uh, let's move on to the next item and then we can we can we can come back when Janiel gets back on. And those are hey, the uh, the I town. I just got back on. I'm on the phone. Uh, my computer is acting strange right now, and I can't get my microphone or my camera. Okay. Are you are you able to uh, move on with your discussion of make ready materials and warehouse? Yes. Okay. Go ahead. So we have uh, installed a fence at um, at our locations in Montpelier. And we have received plenty of materials, and we're working on securing. Uh, we're working on securing um, security systems as well, and uh, we're working with NRTC toward uh, truing up the bomb. That's the bill of materials for our equipment that we've ordered for the first 400 miles. And actually, I think Andrew might be on our. Um, call Andrew, our uh, NRTC project manager. Are you on, Andrew? Yes, I am here. I haven't uh, introduced um, myself to the group yet, though. But. Oh, okay, that's cool. So, yeah, so w what we thought we would like to do is, um, is tr to introduce some of our partners who we're working with uh, every month. And NRTC is our design partner, and Andrew is uh, one of the project managers on our crew. And I, I wanted to ask Andrew to give a 
five minute high level description of what we've been doing together for the past several months so that everyone here can get some exposure to what we have been doing as far as design goes, maybe that 10,000 foot um, uh, overview of what we're doing and maybe a bit about the construction schedule. Is that something you can talk to, Andrew? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Um, again, I'll, I'll do a quick intro. Um, I'm from the uh, the central Vermont area. I'm from uh, Barrytown, actually. I went to Spalding High School in, in Norwich, so spent a lot of time in the central Vermont community and uh, moved west and I started working on telecom about a little bit over a decade ago now. I think I'm in my my 12th year, so I've been doing this for, for quite a while. Um, I'm, I was really excited to have the opportunity to work on these projects, um, specifically CV Fiber. You folks are, uh, you know, my parents still live in, in Barrie, so it's it's an exciting project to be part of, and I'm, um, I'm glad to be here. So, uh, yeah, real quick, I can uh, share out some of the information that we have uh, organized for you folks, and really the, uh, the high level view, and I don't want to go too far into detail. Um, but what we're trying to do for CV Fiber is follow the uh, the PMI standards. So uh, what that really means is we want to make sure that we're a good steward of, of the funds. We're making the best use of the resources that are available to us to build as much as we can, as fast as we can, and uh, make sure that these communities get connected. So uh, what that looks like, um, down in the weeds and again i don't want to go too deep so i'll let jerry and janelle put the brakes on if i go in um, we have a project schedule that we try to follow and that has a lot of the milestones that uh, we'll work on a lot of them will be the same for each of the communities uh, within cv fiber <clears throat> we've divided up the uh, the cv fiber uh, footprint if you will each of your communities uh, in the mapping system called gis uh, some of you folks are probably familiar with uh, GIS mapping tools. Uh, it looks a lot like Google Maps, um, but allows us to basically draw circles around communities and uh, design it. So we can determine uh, how big the fiber needs to be that we're we're going to put up for you folks and uh, where it's going to attach, where it's going to go uh, down into the dirt, down underground, um, and allows us to assign materials for each each attachment along the way. So we know exactly uh, in the plan what it's going to take to uh, to build the network out. And that's that's really what NRTC is um, brings to the table for you folks. And I, I think what I might do, and Jerry and Janelle, let me know if I'm going too far. I'll bring up my screen share and I wanted to um, to share the fielding map real quick, if that's acceptable to the group. Sure, go ahead, Andrew. Fantastic. And I think at this point that a lot of this uh, is not proprietary. I think it's pretty much you know, public knowledge what we're building and where we're building it. So just give me one moment to get that up. Here it comes. Any questions so far? I I looked around the room. I don't recognize anybody here, but that doesn't mean they I've seen everybody. I don't, I, I don't see it yet, uh, no. Andrew. Yep, it's coming right up here. Okay. I'm getting, a, I'm getting an error message from it, but. Okay, we got you now, Andrew. Right, and I, I did just get an error from the mapping system. I'm, I, I just pulled this up in real time. I didn't have it loaded before I, I did my uh, my screen share. So bear with me for a minute here. A live demo. That's brave. Yeah, I'm I'm willing to go for it here, and that's it's going to crash on me. Here. Give me just a sec. I'll try to pull up uh, another data set. We were, we were working in here just a little bit ago uh, from our call this afternoon. I might have to close out my browser session to get it get it up fresh. Here we go. 
So this one's still running, and it's because I didn't close my browser out. But uh, what you'll notice here, and you'll probably see your communities, um, and I'm hoping it doesn't throw an error on me here as I zoom out, and it might. Yeah, it, it will, unfortunately. Well, there we go. Uh, so this looks like gobbledygook. There's a lot of notes on here, but really the impression I want to uh, leave you folks with is the amount of work that's going on out in the field right now within the CV fiber territory. Um, you'll probably have seen some of the, the NRTC trucks uh, driving around through you through your communities. Some of them have the CV fiber door magnets on them now. A little bit of a color clash. They're uh, red Dodge pickup trucks and some of our folks will be on foot. Uh, and what they're doing is they're looking at the infrastructure that's in place out there across CV fiber and they're taking notes about uh, what it's what it's going to take to put in the network. So what types of changes are we going to need to make? Uh, and really it's it's a ton of data collection and we organize it using a mapping system um, with GPS coordinates. So we can go to a telephone pole uh, out there in Marshfield or Callis or wherever and our folks that are out there in the field can load pictures, add notes, and and really uh, get the sense for what it's going to take to make this design happen for CV Fiber. So uh, that's really the work we've been doing here over the last few months. Uh, this level of of collection, um, you know, as soon as the weather turns a little, we'll continue to to collect as long as we can. But at a certain point, you can imagine the snowbanks get so high, we might have to uh, to pause our field collection because we can't uh, get a correct height with the snowbanks there adding to the uh, the depth when we're doing our measurements. So, um, yeah, that's that's really what we've been up to for the most part. Um, you know, each one of these dots, and I, again, I'd let me know how far you want to go, Jerry. I don't want to go too deep. Um, yeah, you don't need to go too. You don't need to go too deep, Andrew, because we could. Yep. You, you, you could make a, a semester's class I, out, I really out, of, out of just what's on this page. Yep. Yeah, but but really, I, I guess the impression I want to leave you folks with is we're engineering it all the way down to the nuts and bolts. So um, the very finest details is how far down uh, the design is going, and that bomb or bill of materials that Janelle just talked about. Uh, what that is, is we can take a collection of all of this data uh, and it, when we extract it, we put it into a spreadsheet form and you can look at it in the aggregate. So you get all the counts of all the bolts, all the washers and all the footages, and that can drive you you know, through your materials procurement process. So what Janelle's doing is taking those outputs from the map, all those units our folks are putting in. Uh, she's getting the list at the end, making the purchase, and then we're chewing it up against uh, the final NRTC design. So um, that's how we achieve the level of accuracy and we're, we're good stewards of, of the resources you folks have for building the network. Uh, any any questions? I know it's this is real high level. I'm trying not to go too deep, just sort of give you a, uh, an impression of the amount of work it, it takes to build one of these networks. RD, I see you've got your hand up. Yes, I wonder if we can get, um, am I unmuted? I, I wonder if we can get um, get the uh, fielding map uh, uh, via email. I can't read it, but the information uh, is most interesting, and um, I'd certainly like to be able to share it if if it's appropriate to do so with my select board, so they can see what action is taking place on the ground. Ra I see Ray saying no. I'm I'm okay. I'm not sure the fielding maps are exactly what you're looking for. Uh, we do we we could do a graphic presentation of the of the eligible addresses. Uh, we could do some kind of graphic representation of the roads that are. I mean, you really don't want those fielding maps. It's what you're looking at is a gigabyte more worth of data. You 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 oh, you, yes. you, you really don't. I, I, you don't want that. You want the visual. Well, I, I, th this is true. I and I certainly don't want to reveal any uh, information uh, uh, that's uh, not appropriate to be shared. And I don't want to put anybody to a great deal extra effort. I would just like to be able to share some of this information 
with my select board to show them what work is actually taking place on the ground. Yeah, no, that's that's that that's 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 a that's a good one, RD. We uh we should we should put that aside for a deeper discussion and come up with something that would be appropriate that not only you but yeah. others could 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 share in a timely in a timely manner and and some of that will be discussed at the webinar um as well which we'll talk about in a little bit um uh, alan i see you've got your hand up andrew um i'm alan gilbert i'm from worcester uh hey, glad 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 you're on the team uh, having somebody from barry's a real plus um so thank you for working here has anything come up uh for NRTC in this project that's been really unusual and a real problem to solve? Or are we sort of just another project that's going along just as fine as it can, and we shouldn't worry that things are gonna get done as quickly as they, as they possibly can? That's a good question. I think uh, what's unique about Vermont is the, uh, the CUD environment that is uh, unique to Vermont. Most of the, uh, <clears throat> most of the NRTC projects are typically uh, utility companies that are looking to uh, satisfy demand from their existing clientele. They're usually uh, rural electric cooperatives and they see the need, their folks are asking for it, and uh, they have the ability to use their existing infrastructure to uh, rapidly deploy a fiber optic network. And really for them, they're usually uh, you know, trained on how to do uh, the type of construction it takes to put up a network. So yeah, that's that's really the the uniqueness that uh, I'd say Vermont has is the communities are are behind this more so than maybe the uh, the utility companies are. Thank you, Walker. I see you have your hand up, sir. Thank you. Uh, related to the fact that the utilities, the electric utilities aren't entirely, you know, doing the poll work. Um, have you, do you have challenges around the amount of off grid people in Vermont? And could you comment on that design work? Uh, I think that might be in the CV fiber wheelhouse. I think there's, um, yeah, we, well, we can, we, I, I can address that and then others can chime in our, our, our uh, requirement for the for the grant funds that we get are for folks that are have 911 addresses that are on the grid so we we recognize that there are off-grid folks and we 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 have built capacity in the system to be able to get out to off-grid folks but going out to folks that are uh off the grid is 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 not the uh, immediate charge of CV fiber. So we've built a system to handle that at some point, but the the grant funds that we have right now are for the unserved and underserved that are already um, on the grid with E911 addresses. I'm talking about people who have E911 addresses and copper pole grid access, not... But oh, not. oh, 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 yeah. Well, that's... Yeah, that's that's. It depends on their it it, it depends on their level of service. Uh, most likely, if if it's copper wire service, then they're eligible for for CV fiber, and and they're in our plans uh, as we as we deploy. Okay, good. Right. You know. yeah. The exception right. might be those uh, those areas, Jerry, where I, again, hopefully, I'm not giving up too much information, but. Those areas where maybe Comcast or another cable provider has uh, one of those D slams and it's fiber fed, but then they have their their basic short distributions out from that cabinet in in copper, like a cable TV area, then they could be served at 100, and those those are a little bit different. Uh, right. So that that's the asterisk yeah. to the answer I gave. <laughs> yeah. 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 And I I remember that coming from from a CV fiber source i think originally when we first looked at that so yep want to make sure we cover that asterisk so uh, are there are there uh other questions for janiel or for andrew um before we move on through the agenda andrew i really want to thank you for being here and 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 sure. 
And a- apart from that, uh, just thanks for being a part of the team, because I mean, even even considering some of the solutions we came up with today on figuring out how to get from A to C, because we didn't realize B was in the way is, uh, you know, that kind of thing is happening on a daily basis. And I certainly appreciate it. So thank you. Yep, my pleasure. Uh, I, I'd like to move on to town ARPA funds. And I am going to share my screen if I can. It should be as simple as a click or two. <clears throat> Uh, let's see. Am I sharing my screen? Do you see a Word document? No, not yet. No, not yet. Okay, like it's trying. Okay, hold on. Let me go back. Let me go back. Um, oh, share, share content. Okay, bear with me. So I want to share my screen. How about that? Can you can you see? There we go. Uh, my Word document. Yes. Yes. Excellent. Okay. So this is the status of our town ARPA funds uh, to date. And this is something that I, I, I pulled together from multiple sources. Um, uh, just, just before this meeting, I haven't even totaled it up, but I'm looking at 400, 500, 600. Over, almost seven hundred thousand dollars. Did I just do that right? Um, and this will be matched dollar for dollar. Uh, but there's something that we need to do uh, in advance of of getting this done. Two things we need to do. First of all, I need to thank everybody that worked so extremely hard to make this happen. Uh, this is this is just phenomenal that the towns have recognized the importance of what we are doing and are willing to uh, support it and put the money where their mouth is. And that is uh, incredibly important and it is very much appreciated. And we are uh, we are going to spend that money and we are going to get people hooked up to fiber Internet throughout central Vermont. And this is another step towards it. Uh, but in order to make this happen, I need to sign some MOUs, and there is also a possibility that even though we are very close to the deadline, there will be additional MOUs that will follow up uh, that I will need to sign so that we can we can codify these agreements and move forward to spend the money in these towns. And I'm going to uh, stop presenting here. And what I what I am going to do here is I'm I'm going to make a motion, and this motion is going to ask that the chair be allowed to uh, sign the MOUs as they come in from the towns, the ones that we have in front of us, and the ones that are very potentially going to come in in the in the following weeks and maybe months if there's an extension granted, which is a possibility. I am going to ask for the uh, authority to sign those MOUs and get them out the door. These in a, in a lump sum that I'll do tonight, tomorrow morning, get them out, and then future ones as they come. Uh, so I would like to uh, read a motion, and then I'll wait for a second. And if there's a second, we can have discussion on it. And uh, you, you know who my mentor uh, was in putting together motions as I go through this. Whereas the American Rescue Plan Act of 2021, <laughs> ARPA, don't, don't make me laugh, provides the state of Vermont funds to develop community broadband networks. And whereas ARPA provides funds directly to towns for the provision of government services, including community broadband networks. And whereas the Vermont Community Broadband Board has set aside state ARPA funds to be used as a dollar for dollar match for town ARPA funds committed to CUDs. And whereas CB Fiber and its member towns have collaborated on identifying the potential use of town ARPA funds and the associated state ARPA fund match, it is moved that, C that the CV Fiber chair be authorized to enter into agreements between CV Fiber and member towns committing CV Fiber to use town ARPA funds and associated state matching funds 
within the town as determined by the negotiated agreement. Second. Second. Ooh, I believe that was Siobhan, but wow. No way. That was ahead of Siobhan. I heard Linda. No you heard Linda? I'll, def I'll, def I'll defer to that. I, I, there's, I'll defer to that. That's fine. Um, any, any, any discussion on this? I, I, I think it's important to do this in one shot and get all the MOUs present and future in here so that we can just knock these out. I should have an MOU tomorrow. So, Jerry. I, Sorry. I'll 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 email this to you, Jeremy, or to Christopher, or Christian. Or, or to Christian. Yeah, no, Christian. That's right. I'll email this to Christian. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Henry. I see your hand up. Yes. Um, what's the timeline for getting the MOUs? Well, the the so the the uh, the the VCBB has asked for a commitment. So if the and the commitment to, uh, so far is by the by the 15th, an MOU is certainly a commitment, uh, a vote of the select board. I would consider a commitment, a letter of commitment is a commitment. Uh, so anything along those lines. But certainly the sooner we have an MOU that can be signed, the better. But I think if the if the select board's already voted henry which i believe is is your situation right we have a letter of commitment yeah. but we don't have an mou yet and i'm just wondering when do we need to do that part two part two would be done as soon as possible but the letter of commitment gets you in the door and 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 you've got your matching funds as far as the vcbb is concerned okay thanks so um there's no particular timeline for us to make. Uh, I mean, we, we need to do an MOU in addition to our letter of commitment, but there is no deadline for that um, pending. There's no hard deadline, but certainly as soon as possible, because we 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 have we want to be able to spend these ARPA funds and 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 not have any uh, hiccups in, on the road to doing that. And are, uh, is Janiel going to be following up? Uh, with the request, for example, for Duxbury to do the MOU? At Absolutely. Okay, very good. Thank you. Absolutely, Henry. Thank you. Any other discussion on this? Thank you again, everybody who's been working so hard. Ted, go ahead, please, sir. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Hey, Ted. <laughs> all right. The phone works. Perfect. Um, it's great to meet you all. So first of all, I'm Ted. I'm the new Williamstown delegate. Uh, I, the reason I, it was good that I went to the select board because I learned that they have about $369,000 worth of ARPA funds that they have not allocated yet. So is there any, I mean, I'm assuming even without the match, right, CV Fiber would take some number of ARPA funds. And what is the, is there kind of any sort of guidelines in terms of a request amount or well the, would the uh, I I would I would recommend to the to the town that as much of that as they can spare would go and get be matched by CV fiber by excuse me by the uh, state funds uh, to double the amount that CV fiber would be able to spend in the town we can get you a letter of commitment, a draft letter of commitment, or a, uh, a, a template letter of commitment that you can take to the select board. Um, I know that September the 15th is the deadline, but if we've got something in the works, um, I would certainly lobby to at least on an individual basis have that extended if something happening on the on the 15th is, uh, is impossible. But at the close of this meeting, I will email you a, uh, a a template on the uh, on the letter of commitment. That's the easiest, fastest thing thing to do. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, uh, since the last that. board meeting was last night, I I, I would anticipate that it would be able to get on the agenda before the 11th of October. Okay. Well, we, we'll we'll do, we'll do it. We'll do what we can and let the VCB B know that that is in the works. Great. Okay, excellent. Uh, additional discussion on this on the motion that's been seconded and is on the floor. Are there any opposed to the motion? 
Are there any abstentions? Hearing none, the motion passes unanimously. Thank you very much. Uh, we just gained at least $700,000 in, in funds. Thank you. Thank you all. Excellent. Fantastic job. Fantastic job. Uh, I will, um, and Jeremy, I will email this out to uh, Christian as, as soon as we're finished. Um, I'd also, I'd like to move now to, if, 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 if there's uh, no opposition to this, I'd like to move on and talk a little bit about the webinar update that's coming up because I, I, I want to make sure that there's nothing in our webinar update that would uh, surprise a board member. Um, and I went and looked back at what we had said we were going to do and where we were at the last webinar, which you may remember was um, in the middle of June. and. Uh, fortunately, we have really moved forward on every front that we presented in June. So it's it's a it's a positive uh, report that we're going to bring with this with this with this uh, new web with this upcoming webinar. And some of the some of the key items that I want to bring up are first of all we're on track for our fall construction start. It's not. We haven't started, but we're on track for our fall construction start. Our materials have been purchased. They have not all been received. And as as Janiel had mentioned and Andrew had mentioned, we are, uh, as we learn more about what we need as we move forward, we're going back and checking our purchases to make sure that we haven't missed anything. Um, we also have our warehouse and our outside space secured you know that we we have a web, web uh, warehouse at pioneer center in montpelier and then basically right behind uh just north of uh, of bar hill uh distillery we we have an outdoor fenced in space where we have our where we have our some of our uh fiber and the rest of our fiber is being held at wex facility um we have a construction grant that has been awarded so that we can pay for construction. Uh, we have a construction master services agreement and scope of work for the fall work to be done that is under review and, and, and soon to be negotiated. Uh, we have contractors that we've talked with that are willing to work through the fall and into the winter and really don't see the the seasonal change as a problem other than things do slow down, but there's no reason to come to a multi-month dead stop uh, is what we've heard so far. We'll see how that goes. Uh, our make ready is ongoing and has been quite successful uh, for the most part. And in, in areas where we've run into make ready problems, we've come up with some solutions, uh, which is an extremely, uh, important aspect of the way we're moving forward is that when we see problems, we get them solved. Uh, we also have permits and easements that are that are necessary and that are under development. Again, we're somewhat fortunate for these areas that we're looking to start in the fall. They're relatively light on the permits and the easements. We're, we're not we're not crossing any any interstate highways. We're not crossing any railroads. The things that are, are long pole items uh, in the tent, we're we're fortunately avoiding in these in these uh, in these first areas. Siobhan, go ahead. I see your hands up. I was just uh, speaking of easements and poles. Made me wonder about Mr. Childs and how that's going. I've that, got just just for the board's information. I've got a constituent in Orange who has issues with the easements across his land he's got rather a large parcel and uh we, we've been trying to research what's going what what the legal requirements are or we may want to discuss it offline never mind <laughs> <laughs> well i would i would i would i um no that's 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 a good point and and um the the situation that we have here is not going to be unique it may be singular in that it's jumped up at us at the moment, but it is certainly not going to be not going to be uh, 
unique. Which uh, is why let, I brought it say, up. Yeah. Let, let me let me uh, let me say for the for the public aspect of the meeting is that we are certainly looking into it and and want to make sure that we understand all the facts before we move forward in any way. I would also add that in in from the perspective of the webinar that we're presenting and our fall construction, this issue is not an item that that uh, inhibits our fall construction or impacts our fall construction. This would be this would be uh, in in the in the next construction season that all of this needs to be, of course, resolved in advance. Um, but but it it isn't impacting our our fall construction. And you know if we uh, if it if it comes up later, if we end up in executive session, we can talk about it a little bit more then if we need to. Uh, is that, is that sufficient for you now, Siobhan? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I just brought it up because I didn't know if it was unique and I know that there are members of the public who care. So, yep, that's fine. Yeah, it, it, it's 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 not going to be unique um, and we all we all care about it. Um, I'll, I'll move on to Linda. You have a question. Could you tell us if there's, what the critical path item is in our construction? Is oh. it make ready? Well, were there were there only one critical path item? Um, every, every, everything that I've mentioned so far is a critical path item. All these things need to be aligned, resolved. Designs need to be final. All all poles uh, we we need to have the uh, approvals for for licenses for every pole that we touch. We need to have every permit and every easement fully resolved and satisfied. We need to have the, 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 the contractors on board, ready to go to start on time. They need to have all the materials they need on hand in order to move forward. And everything needs to be there a couple of weeks before it actually needs to hit the street. So everything everything I've, I've, I've mentioned um is is a critical path item now some risks some are more some are higher risk than others in the sense that they may be further from being resolved but um any any one of these things goes awry and things things have to uh things either have to stop or we need to figure out a workaround sounds like we're juggling we well that we're 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 we're, we're yeah we're building um David, I see you. David Lawrence, I see you have your hand up, sir. Hi, as long as we were talking constituent stuff, I just wanted to um, bring up a constituent concern that I don't think is actually a question. I mean, it is a, ultimately a question, but I don't think it's one we can answer right now. And that is um, one of my uh, Middlesex people lives up a very long uh, driveway that uh, does not, he wants to um, finish his last mile, so to speak. It's not a full mile, but <laughs> in, in the metaphor sense, um, with a, 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 a wireless signal, right? And so he's basically interested to know if we could, you know, um, I don't know exactly what he's picturing as far as who's provisioning the equipment for that, but I know that um, he's thinking of, he wants to turn out at the pole by the road rather than trying, he can't afford the trenching to go all the way up to his place and so on. So um, that's just something to, uh, apparently when he talked to, I'd have to look in my email, but a different provider, um, they were just totally not interested. They, they wouldn't allow it, right? And so uh, he's hoping that we'll have the flexibility to allow for that type of setup. Well, that's really interesting. Um, I, I am not going to make a commitment at this point because we certainly need more information and we need you know detailed field information. We also need to coordinate with Waitsfield Telecom, who are the folks that will be doing drops and 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 you know will be our ISP uh, to see if they've run into this kind of a thing before. Um, so yeah, we'll have to we will have to uh, look into that. It is certainly our intention to bring high speed internet to everyone in 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 our district that doesn't have high speed internet. Right. Um, I'm happy to provide the feedback to him right now that it just has not been fully reviewed yet, but that we were definitely open to looking into that as a possible 
Uh, We're absolutely uh, open to looking at it. I, I just, I don't want to make any promises without having more detailed information. Oh, I am with you on that. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you, David. Uh, uh, so I, I'd like to move on a little bit because I, I talked, the, the uh, June webinar is going to talk about the moving forward on the construction front, but then we've also been moving forward on building our subscriber base. We've been coordinating ever more closely with Waitsfield Telecom. Uh, we now have regular meetings with them so that we, we, are, we are working together. We have been developing uh, our our subscription fees, and if we uh, if we end up in executive session, we may talk about that a little bit more detail later on. We've also been working on the uh, the affordability and equal access programs. Um, we're we're looking very deeply into that one as CV Fiber, and also in concert with Waitsfield Telecom, that has been doing this for a long time and has a lot of history in this, and we. Uh, you know, we're definitely not going to reinvent the wheel, but we sure see some spokes that are busted in this program that we would that we would like to see fixed. We, I don't know if they're in our purview to do that or not, but certainly affordability and equal access is a is a very big aspect of what we're looking at for our subscribers. Um, we also have our marketing contract, MSA, and scope of work. They are also uh, under review, so we. Uh, we are moving forward on that front as we had announced that we were starting to move forward in our June webinar. Uh, we're, we're, we're getting close to being able to sign off on that. And then the last thing I would mention about our subscriber base, um, and maybe this isn't exactly correct place to put it, but we have our town ARPA funds and we can talk about the, uh, the, the funds that we've received and hopefully with an extension, the ability to receive additional funds from towns that still want to get on board. Um, and, you know, I, I'm, I'm always one to be concerned about overselling and sounding too rosy. Uh, there are some risk items that, that will still play, a, play into what we're doing. There's always the potential for mater materials delays. And you know we're we're trying to address that problem by taking partial deliveries. So if we've ordered ten, but we only need two for the fall, we're more than happy to just take the two. We don't need the other eight for another few months. Uh, we're also looking at alternative sources um, to see if maybe another CUD has one extra for the time being that we don't need, and we might be able to use some of their equipment to be paid back in kind, in, in kind over time. So we're trying to ad address the materials delay problem. Uh, there's also, of course, contracting issues um, and manpower issues and having the, having the boots on the ground to actually do the work at the right time. Um, we're trying to address this with advanced planning, let, letting the contractors know what our plans are, uh, letting them know where they'll be working so they, they can get out there and take a look at the, at the area. We're looking at even potentially flexible deployment where if there's one spot that is, is lagging, perhaps we can, we can switch our deployment around a little bit and let that one happen in week eight instead of week two so that everybody keeps working and we don't have to come to a stop because something jumped up that we have to deal with. So for all these risk items, also make ready is, is, is always another one uh, that could pose a problem for us. And we've been looking at potentially coming up with a design alternatives, um, or we've come up at looking at alternative sources for some of the materials that might be needed uh, for make ready. So even though, even though there are risk items, we, we don't let them just stand at risk items. We hope to address them um, with some risk management well, to the extent that we, that we can. So you know, these are the things I want to talk about in the, in the June webinar. I don't want to overpromise, but I want to let folks know that we've moved forward on the items that we I, I identified in June. Here it is September. We move forward. We'll likely have another webinar probably in two months um, because I think things are moving so quickly that we'll have we'll have a, even more to present um, 
in, in, in two months. And maybe we'll follow that one up with something in the beginning of the new year and, and get set up for, because things are happening so quickly, we'll see if, uh, if we can keep on a two month track as we get our construction um, moving forward. So that, that's, that's just something that I, I, I wanted the board to know about. My intention is to send out the webinar in advance so that folks can take a look at it and, and, and make a comment. Uh, I see that Linda has her hand up. Go ahead, Linda. I would just like to mention that the Senior Citizen Center in Waterbury has generously offered their uh, facility um, and opened it up to the public on Wednesday night, the 21st, so that uh, people who don't have internet can come and watch the webinar and also to run it again at their Wednesday luncheon the week after. Uh, they're going to put up the video. Uh, I'm going to go over and uh, run a replay of the video at the Senior Citizen Center. So I'd like to just uh, put it out to the public how generous the Senior Citizen Center has been offering their facility for us to use. Thank you. Well, that, that's that's absolutely marvelous, Linda. And you know that 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 kind of outreach with organizations such as the Senior Center are. I think going to be invaluable as we move forward, uh, be, because we we need to do we need to do outreach in multiple ways, and using existing organizations like that is is a really good way to do that. So thank you again for leveraging that. If I can use such a vulgar term, that that's that's a really helpful thing to do. Thank you. Uh, any other discussion on the on the webinar? So I have the construction schedule on the on the calendar here, I, I, on the agenda. I, I, I feel like we've talked about it a fair amount, but let me go to Henry. Henry, you have a question, sir? Uh, yeah, I typed it into the chat. Um, at last night at the Duxbury Select Board meeting, they wanted to know if customers were responsible for paying for the customer drops or what that situation is currently being, you know, uh, considered as. Well, D Duxbury, um, didn't did I just see on my list that Duxbury has allocated twenty thousand of the of its ARPA funds? Yes. I, I I I hope that when we when we sign the MOU, that those ARPA funds will be able to be used towards drops. Um, I, I guess I, I, the more general question is. Um, is there going to be an individual resident requirement to pay for drops? And what what is the current, um, you know, consideration for that? So at, at, the, at the moment that has not been finalized, uh, there there will be a, a a threshold standard drop that will that will be. Uh, not impacted, not impacting the uh, the the subscriber, and then we don't know what that number is. There will also be town ARPA funds that will then also be used to support drops uh, within that that town, right? So each town that that town ARPA money will only be spent in that town. Um, but so far, it looks like the lion's share of that money is going to be spent on drops, um, and then. Then there's the, you know, there are folks that may fall outside of that description that I've just laid out. And some of that uh, responsibility may fall on, uh, may likely fall on the subscriber, but it all depends on what that threshold is. And it's typically a distance threshold if we're talking aerial, it, it'll, it'll be a distance threshold with no impact to the subscriber. And then there'll be additional funds available uh, from the town, hopefully. And then after that, it would it would typically typically be the subscriber kicking in to make up whatever delta uh, might be there. So that, that's the way it looks now. Uh, have I misspoken? Let me go across the room there. Is, did, did I get that right? I, I believe that's where we're at with, yeah, with that's, uh, that's installs. Right. 
secretary, we're, we're still working on the details. Um, and we have an operator who's going to actually be doing the drops for us. A waste field will be. Right. Um, so part of this depends on our negotiations with them, as well as uh, the distance from the last pole to the service location. So it is to be determined. But, but let me add that I, I've recognized for a long time that I don't, well, I'll, I'll make this personal, but I think this this goes out to to others as well. It, I don't I don't want the 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 drop to be a barrier to entry for anybody that 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 wants to get CV fiber. Uh, it really it really shouldn't be a, a a barrier that can't be overcome for someone to get their service. So we will we we are looking to reduce that burden on the subscriber to the fullest extent we can. And and we will do that. Uh, so that's uh, you know that kind of rounds out that answer. Thank you. Uh, yeah, of course, Henry. Uh, let's see. Are there, are there any other questions on the construction schedule? I put this in here, but I feel like I've I've touched on it multiple times. We're we're on track to start. Uh, certainly on two of our uh, design areas in this in this upcoming fall and hopefully we'll be able to get through that approximate 100 miles uh, and start getting folks signed up in the winter. So next we have our 2023 budget and I'm gonna turn this over to the chair of our finance committee and we will determine if and when we may need to get into uh, executive session to talk about the details here. Uh, Ray, would you like to take this over, please? Uh, you're on mute, Ray. Yeah, yeah. You can't hear me. Okay. Okay, you can hear me now, though. Okay, so um, let me, before we go into executive session, <clears throat> uh, let me say, start off with what the schedule is, right? In October, the board takes action and approves a budget. Um, and that's October 13th, somewhere around there, October 12th. And and then it goes to the towns for their review. And their their comments come back to us. I don't think we've, I think there have been some comments that have come back, but uh, usually not. In November, we have a public hearing uh, on, that, on that budget. And then in December, the board actually adopts a budget. And that's our budget for 2023, okay? Um, and of course, then the budget during the course of the 23 year uh, can be adjusted and can be changed. Money can be moved from one account to another, line items can be added to it, et cetera. And certainly whatever happens between October and December, uh, how, if we become more, uh, more informed about one thing or another, the budget may change from the one that you, uh, the board has approved in uh, October. And so, whereas, we're going to be talking about construction schedule, strategic planning, and the budget. And where that is. So what we need to do is we need a motion for strategic planning. I mean, for going executive session. And uh, I just wanted to pull uh, Jerry's chain there a little bit. So <laughs> <laughs> he did such a good job on that, though. I appreciated the running it by me first. <laughs> it, it was uh, it was useful. Uh, and so there's, there's two parts. There's only one motion, but there's kind of two parts to it. The, the first part is uh, why we're going to executive session. The second part has, is inviting people into the executive session. And that would include um, our treasurer, uh, delegates and alternates. Delegates, of course, are, are, are invited, but delegates and alternates and vice chairs of committees. And, I, and I'd like to know, if I, am I leaving anybody out besides uh, Christian, uh, Mayor, who, who's here from or from um, RPC, right from no minutes, and uh, is there anybody else here that doesn't come under one of those, one or more of those uh, criteria? And Janila's staff, so she she's invited. So so we don't have to kick anybody off the call, Jerry. So here we go. Move that we enter executive session, discuss records that are confidential pursuant to 1 VSA section 313 Alpha 6, specifically construction and budgeting details that relate to our strategic planning, and that all alternates, uh, committee vice chairs, and um, our, our uh, treasurer are 
are invited as they have information that is needed in, in accordance with 1 VSA section 313 Bravo. Second. Okay, the second by Jeremy. Any discussion on this? And Andrew, you could leave. Uh, Gaties. Yes, I was. I was just getting ready to exit stage right. Thanks, everyone. Uh, oh, it's a pleasure. Look forward to working with you on this project. It's it's very exciting. Thanks. Have a great Thanks, night. Andrew. Thanks, bye, guys. bye, Andrew. Bye. All right. Uh, any additional discussion? Any opposed to the motion? Any abstentions? Hearing none, the motion passes unanimously. Please give me a minute as I stop recording. And we are going to go into executive session at 7.07 and I am stopping the recording. <laughs>